Tonight, you may have watched the ABC special, Truth and Lies, the Tanya Harding story, where the former skater talked about the infamous 1994 baton attack against longtime competitor Nancy Kerrigan. One skater that was part of that era of figure skating and beat Tanya Harding in the 1994 Olympics is California native and Bay Area resident Christy Yamaguchi, the first Asian American to earn Olympic gold. Well, ABC 10's John Bartel recently caught up with Christy in San Jose to get insight into what her relationship was like with Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, and much more. San Jose, California, the 2018 U.S. Figure Skating National Championships. It's where the best of the best compete for one goal, a spot on the Olympic team. Tanya Harding is second. And here is Christy Yamaguchi. The Nationals is a place national California title. native Christy Yamaguchi knows well. The world championship last time. She's been here eight times and won four first place medals. Christy Yamaguchi, you are like America's sweetheart in a way. That's Dorothy Hamill. Oh, that was oh. my I idol. Okay. Uh, <laughs> She's a very delicate and complete skater with such grace. Christie's humble personality and bright smile made her an easy target for cameras. But it was her elegance on ice that eventually would earn her a seat on the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. But Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, and Midori Ito. Were you guys friends when you guys were all going to the Olympics? There was friendly competition between all three of us, for sure. That competition quickly became focused on the triple axel, a complicated stunt at the time, one that Tanya Harding was known for and Christy struggled with. I knew it was a risky thing and that they would have to land them in order to um, really get the edge on me, uh, but I knew I had other things to bring to the table. She can't hang on to the landing. It was tilted in the air. Christy's gut feeling was right. Tanya didn't land the triple. It was Christie's consistently flawless performance that allowed her to become the first Asian American to win the Olympic gold and become an instant role model. After the Olympics, there was just yeah a lot going on, and the Asian American community was one of the first to reach out and offer assistance. Christy is a third generation descendant of Japanese immigrants. Her grandfather served in World War II. Her mother was born in an internment camp. Christy grew up in Hayward, California, where her parents supported her dream of skating since she was six years old. I was really one generation off of um, a family who lost everything and had to rebuild. And so um, I think at that point, it, yeah, it, things started to sink in. Christie's Olympic win forever changed the face of ice skating, paving the way for other Asian American skaters like Michelle Kwan and Karen Chen. Today, Christie's still living an active lifestyle. After appearing in a number of movies, she made her way onto Dancing with the Stars. In 2011, she wrote an award-winning children's book. That following year, she started her own clothing company, which helped support her nonprofit early childhood literacy program called Always Dream. So doing a lot of programs with kids in schools and hopefully getting uh, you know, the stat that over 60% of our fourth graders are not reading at grade level, you know, trying to bring that number down. Christy hasn't left the skating world behind. She still trains with her daughter and mentors the next generation of skating stars. You hang out a lot with, uh, with a lot of these, these, these skaters now. What, what is that like? You know, it's hard nowadays, I think. Um, you're so exposed that in some ways I think you have to put up a little bit of a thick skin to, you know, be able to take uh, everything that comes at you these days. The world of figure skating is always changing. But for Christy, life after skating has offered up a world of change. Yeah, so I'm busy being mom. I mean, that's, you know, like any mom out there identifies with. You're just trying to get through the day. And, but, you know, it, it's, this is the best time of my life. In San Jose, John Bartel, uh, ABC very 10 very News. Oh, doesn't it sound like the 90s were just like the golden years oh, of I mean, ice skating and figure skating? And she makes <laughs> such a good point, too, about you being so exposed now, right? With social right. media and right. but, you the news cycle. I mean, with all the Tanya Harding stuff, you needed some pretty thick skin back then, too. <laughs> that is That's so true. <laughs> I know a lot of folks were glued to the TV tonight. What did yes. you think of the segment, huh? Oh, I, I mean, I was such a Michelle Quantara. I was all into this mm -hmm. stuff, so I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> Staying on the sports theme, guess